Hello everyone, I'm Brahm Mithra. I just want to start off by saying uh, thank you so much uh, for all the awesome comments I keep getting, uh, for reminding me that I actually had three iron, that was super helpful. This settlement event, um, I'll need that iron. <laughs> so that was very helpful. Uh, so here's one of the cool things about this is there's always uh, people finding my videos you know after I've put them out so they're they're you know they're still watching them catching up and um, I feel bad because there's no way I can include their comments in the newest video so it's like they're gonna miss out so I've gone back and looked at some of the more recent comments that relate to things that we're still talking about even now even in these episodes right now so um, one of the things I found was the uh, level 3 monster hunting and things like that. Uh, or, you know, fighting Screaming Antelope over and over, and why would you, why would you want to fight the Screaming Antelope over and over? Um, so yeah, I talk about that in the beginning of this settlement phase. Uh, I give my opinions on it, and I open it up for questions to you about whether or not or how strict we want to play the rules. <laughs> but yeah, the, the antelope and stuff, that's a mechanic. The level 3 monsters, fighting them, it, it's, it's a mechanic. You have to do it, so... Uh, but with that said, I want to start a uh, Discord channel so, you know, people who are just finding this series now can catch up and talk to me even though I won't be able to include their comments. And I feel bad for that. Because uh, they're probably going to watch it, they'll watch the thing, they'll be like, oh, look at I asked that, or I wanted the same thing, or, uh, you know, the people who are already caught up are the ones who always get features and comments, which is fine, and that's great. Um, that's there's the, the most up-to-date events, so they're the ones who should be included, but I'd like to do more ways of, of including everybody who watches it. So with that, I want to start a Discord channel. I'll include links to it and stuff in the description of this video. Um... Hopefully, I've never set up a Discord channel before, but hopefully I figure it out before the end, uh, before this video goes live. I'm working on it right now, during this recording of this, and as this is rendering, and as it is uploading, and as it is processing, and as it finally goes up live on YouTube. I'll worked on it all before that. <laughs> so, um... Yep, this is a longer settlement phase because last settlement phase was completely moot and completely washed. So we have got doubly good resource spending. So um, thank you so much as always. It's so very humbling. And uh, enjoy the episode. Here we go. Settlement phase. Uh, we have lots of stuff to spend here. So I... I, I it's unpredictable what's going to happen in a settlement phase. Uh, mostly because we have to draw from the deck here. So, let's uh, let's start shuffling things up and then we'll roll the dice. Whew. So we've got a lot of resources to spend. Um, now I know... There's... There's problems in my very humble opinion, with the end game of this game. Um, mostly, which was introduced in 1.5, um, in terms of variety of monsters. And yes, so I'm torn between, yes, I want to make sure I'm doing entertaining things, and I don't want to fight antelopes all the time. I agree, it's stupid and boring. At the same exact time, the antelope is really good for fighting, and it sucks that that's a thing. But not only that, um, it gives you vermin, and we need vermin, because we want to be able to cook stuff, uh, and it's you get two vermin for fighting it, just for even winning, whereas if you fight something else, um, I'd have to bring a bug trap. To even get vermin. See now, now the other the other thing here is 1.5 makes it so you have to fight a level three monster. And I could fight a flower knight, and I'll fight a gorm. I think next time I'll fight a gorm. 
but I would have loved to fight the Lion God. But I can't because the rules say it's a level 3. I could fight it, but there's no reason to ever fight that. A level 3 version of that thing. Their rewards are not good. They're just not good. The rewards for even fighting a level 1 are not that great. But at least it's fighting a level 1. And the level 3 could just instantly kill 3 survivors, from what I remember right. Um, based on one of its AI cards. You could just top deck that. And you could just instantly lose three survivors. I'm pretty sure there's an instant death in its AI cards and its monster level death. So, um, it's just not worth it. And it's too late for me to add things like the Sunstalker and the Dragon King. Uh, I would love to fight them as quarries, but even they're not worth fighting level three versions of things. The problem with it is... Well, that's the main problem. The main problem is those level, you need to fight level 3s, and some of those things just aren't worth it. Even a Dung Beetle is just not worth fighting it. Um, the other problem is the game is way too long. I There's no there's almost no reason to ever fight the Watcher at level 20, uh, at Lantern Year 25. See, like, we would have, right now is, uh, this we would have just fought the Watcher. And there's no incentive to fight him late. Because in 1.5, the later you fight him, the later it takes for you to be able to oxidize things and to be able to use the Exhausted Lantern Horde. It's Not only is it in your benefit to fight him early because he's weaker with the 20 toughness, but just the way the game is laid out in 1.5, you're also incentivized to do so because you get the Horpolation dice, you get time to level up Horpolation, uh, you get to oxidize. So it's, it's not even incentive to wait to fight to land to 20 or 25. So in essence, you're really adding like nine years worth of combat to the game. And the White Giggle Lion, is that, I, I could fight the White Giggle Lion. Maybe I'll fight the White Giggle Lion. That's at least worth it, the White Giggle Lion. Um, the, re the resources have been upgraded. Even the level three Gorm, I, I mean, I I'll make it so he gives me Black Lycan because you're supposed to do that, but the resources haven't been adjusted for level 3 Gorm. Anyway, the, the point is the antelope is completely broken, and it's not broken because it's a pinata. A lot of people think it's broken because you get all these resources, and you do get a lot of resources. But, I mean, it's broken for a lot of reasons outside of that. Uh, with Barber Surgeon being tied to it, cooking being like so beneficial to fight it to get good cooking recipes because the plus one evasions you need beef steak and stuff so i mean i'll save my beef steak now that i got it and i'll save the um whatever the other thing is i'll make sure not to spend those organs so when i do fight the gorm at least if i can cook next year i can at least make something fighting expansion monsters doesn't help because he never made cooking better um there's just a lot a lot a lot of reasons. <laughs> so Endgame is, is slow, but I think I've gotten enough stuff. Hopefully, if this settlement event goes good, I I can I can fight other things just for fun, like a white giga lion, and I because I won't need the resources. Like, um, if this goes well, if this doesn't go well, and I lose half my resources, it's just it's just not worth it, and that's. Hard to fix in the way the game currently is. These late game problems with the, the antelope, it, it's, it's just hard to fix. <laughs> it's hard to fix. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to go away either because, like, here's the antelope hit location. I still have it all out. Like, the antelope hit location, not only does everything has a critical wound on here, right? But a lot of them have persistent injuries. Here's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. He has eight persistent injuries. And look, the frog dog expansion, those weapons and stuff benefit persistent injuries. So it's even like more like, why wouldn't you want to fight this thing? Because you're guaranteed, I think it's either you get plus two luck when you fight some of the persistent injury location, or like, I think the frog dog probably replaces the antelope, but still. The antelope is, 
I don't know. It, it's hard to fix. I'll, I'll, like I said, I, I want to make it more entertaining. I'll fight other things, but it's not just the antelope. It's also 1.5. The fact you, you're forced to fight level 3 monsters and a lot of those expansions just aren't worth fighting them. Even, even regardless of the black lichen, even if their resources get adjusted, the difficulty is just too high. And it's not worth losing survivors at this point in the game when you're so close to fighting the Gold Smoke Knight. Maybe if, if there was some way I could resist the Gold Smoke Knight right now after this Cinnamon event, like in 26, I probably would. <laughs> but I have to do four more fights. And if you're going to do four more fights, why not fight something easy like the Antelope? It's, it's too long. The game is too long, and I don't dislike it being this long. Uh, I, I, I just wish that you weren't forced to fight a level 3. And not only that, there's other things you could do to make it go faster and not feel long. Even thematically speaking, like, why are we still doing the entire hunt? Like, why, why, why am I going all the way to the end of the hunt board fighting an antelope? Thematically speaking, the anal the that hunt, the hunt board, overwhelming darkness is the point where like the watcher's light, or I don't know who the hell knows, but I'm just saying the way I've always interpreted it is overwhelming darkness is the point where the lantern's light around the settlement gets thin, and you have to now you're now you're going past that light, that protective light, and it even says when you defeat the the watcher. Level 3 monsters are coming in now. That's why you have to fight them all the time. They're, they're surrounding the settlement because the, they're, the presence of the Watcher is gone. So why am I still doing the whole hunt board? That stupid hunt board takes like 20, 30 minutes to get down. Right? I don't even care that the balance is fine. Right? The balance... Oh, you need to do the hunts because it kills survivors. And you need to balance out the game. The hunt, the hunt phase balances it out. It makes hunting things threatening. But it doesn't make thematic sense. For someone who says he spends so much time making sure that a monster feels unique in the world and he doesn't advance doing anything until it fits, like he said that with Atnus, like he wanted to make sure that the story of Atnus felt, felt thematic, this is just, this the 1.5 and the gold, it's just all just thrown in. It's just tossed in. <laughs> like no care was given to when the Watcher is at, what's a settlement like that doesn't have a Watcher? Who cares? We're, we're just doing it now. Uh, and you can find the stuff online, but like I said, it's there's a lot wrong with after defeating the Watcher, and I'll probably fight a Gorm or more Gate Alliance, or I don't want to I don't want to fight level three Flower Knights um, because you get stuff from them that you get the flower, and I've already expressed my opinions on on the more Sleeping Virus flowers, where you could just stack stats on things. I think that's the worst part of the Flower Knight expansion is that Vespertine Flower, and the level 3 Flower Knight just hands them out. Not to mention, even if I were to fight the level 3 Flower Knight, um, I can't make any of its gear, because that that's half of its gear is too far gone now. I'd have to wait four years. I could escape the event if I were to make it, but, you know what I mean? I, like the, the I couldn't make the gear because that stuff's locked to Kingdom of the Bloom. It's just, and the, uh, what was it? It's the Dung Beetle Knight I meant. If I wanted to fight Tom now, I couldn't. He doesn't arrive for five five years, I think it is. You have a story with him, and Tom's awesome, but it's too late now. I can't. I, I It takes five years for him to get to the settlement. In five years, I got the Gold Smoke Knight, so I couldn't even fight Tom if I wanted to, and I hate that fight. I would I would never want to fight Tom anyway. He's not. He would. Tom's the perfect vignette where you need the Trash Crown, uh, the Wisdom Potion, uh, Rawhide Headband on probably two survivors. And a cat, I circle it. Otherwise, he just kills you. You need all those things. So, um, I'll, I'm going to try my best not to fight any more antelopes. <laughs> maybe we'll fight Giga Lions and Gorms. And, I don't know, maybe... I don't want to fight a phoenix. See, the phoenix eats the same thing. I don't want to fight a phoenix. The Phoenix level 3 could just... My survivors are too old because I need to level them up to fight the Gold Smoke Knight. He could just kill them. Or if I send new ones there, he could erase them because they only have two hunt experience. They could go down, too. Um, I can fight Spidic, uh, Spidiculus or Spidicules. I've heard him say it, that it's supposed to be like Hercules, so it's Spidiculus. But he's also said that it's supposed to sound or rhyme with Ridiculous, so it's Spidiculus or Spidiculus. I don't know. 
I don't know how to say it exactly, but I can add him, but I don't want to because that event there are events that you have to add when you add spiticules in. It's so bad. <laughs> and it's not that it's bad. It's just not good to do now. Um, but yeah, so that's my opinion on the... And I don't know how to fix it. I, I don't know how you'd fix it. The antelope's deeply tied to it, and they've already gone ahead with the 1.5 stuff. So it would be hard to fix. So, um, that's my opinion on it. <laughs> Let's start the settlement event. All right. So, uh, we only have eight endeavors. One person was not a tinkerer. So, as you can see here, we'll be one short. Uh, I don't think who was not a tinkerer. Uh, Hayden was not a tinkerer because he wasn't born in the settlement. He, I think he was a gift from the hand. So, uh, here we go. Starting Lantern Year 26. There are no events at all planned uh, to Lantern Year 28 where we fight a third level 3 Kingsman. So, um, oh, the, thing, the other thing I was going to say. I want to play as pure as possible, but I would love to fight the Lion Knight. Or the, not the Lion Knight, the Lion God. But I'm not going to fight a level 3, and I'm forced to. But if no one cares, I'll fight a level 1. I might even fight a level 2. But level 3 is never worth it. Level 2 is barely worth it at all. I would fight a level 1 Lion Knight, and I don't even think I'd... The sad thing is, I don't even think I would win. <laughs> I still don't even think I would beat a level 1 Lion God. But I will fight it, but I would if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it level 1. But I can't, because 1.5 doesn't let me. So, that's the option. If you want to see something new and interesting, it'd be a Lion God. Which would be great to do now, because Lion God is something I wouldn't be able to do even in Season 2, until, like, Lantern Year 12 or later. So it's either going to be now, within the next two or three eps next two or three hunts, or 15 episodes into Season 2. <laughs> um, or I, I was maybe going to do a vignette before I reviewed it, too. But um, the next review I think I was going to do was the Manhunter, because I, uh, I like Manhunter. It's good. Or, or Spidiculies. Spidiculies, spidicules, spid spidiculous. <laughs> um, all right, that's it. No more talk. Um, let's go. Of course. Why? Uh, ten. Ten cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tenth card. At least we get to endeavor. It's not a good. This is not a good one, but at least we get to endeavor. At least we get to do stuff. So triathlon of death. Here we go. I'm gonna read it. <laughs> uh, the settlement engages in games of skill. Each player nominates a different survivor. Every nominated survivor determines their score for each possible contest. Survivor score determines their place. Settlement has one survivor. Do not roll. They realize that they have been competing against themselves and gain plus three insanity, a random disorder, and the last man standing fighting art. Okay, um, so it doesn't see... I don't need to choose from returning survivors. So let's just go through this. Um, so you determine your score. Uh, I need to at least nominate... Because each player nominates a different survivor. Every nominated survivor determines their score. So, let's just say, I need at least two. I, even though there's only one player, I can't run a tri, tri ah, can't run a triathlon by myself. I'll, I'll nominate at least two people. So, um, I don't think there's any way of dying here. Yeah, there's no way of dying. The The best thing here, I would love to get the weapon proficiency for the axe person, or I just nominate both two people who I want with axe proficiency. I might as well nominate four people. Um, the only thing is, I don't remember if I got bed. If I got bed, I can do the triathlon because I can put those people to just 
heal them in a bed, but I don't think I ever got bed. Yeah, I don't think I ever got it. <laughs> it's one of the other things. I never got Forbidden Dance either. What are some of the things I missed out on? So yeah, I missed out on bed, pictograph, face painting, um, Forbidden Dance. All these other ones are okay. I don't care about those. But yeah, man, even as hard as I tried, I never got uh, face painting or Forbidden Dance. The face painting thing is great, but I wasn't playing that way. Face painting is something I will definitely get next time for dual, for the dual wheel or the, the pairing stuff. But um, I knew I was going axes and stuff for the lantern glaives this time because I'm playing people with lantern. That's the other thing. Oxidation's locked to people with lantern. So if you're going to do it, you might as well play. Um, people, if you're going to play people with lantern, you might as well focus on do playing oxidized gear. So... Although I really do want to play the Giga Lions dagger, but I don't have a dagger wielder. Okay, so let's do. Um, well, let's look around for some people. I could just I could nominate three people. Yeah, we'll nominate three people, and they'll all have axe proficiency. So we'll go Luke. Cause I don't, uh, could he skip the next hunt? Oh, sorry, I put this here. So yeah, so here's what's gonna happen. So as long as I don't get fourth place, I don't know, should it, I should, it's probably, it's probably some rule where it's like, oh, you gotta make sure you nominate all four people. But it says in right here in the rules that each player nominates a different survivor. Each nominated survivor determines their score for each. Survivor score determines, Settlement has only one... Yeah, it doesn't say I need to make sure I have four people, but... Should I just for fun pick all four? <laughs> it doesn't make any... It's just bad to pick all four. So yeah, I'll just pick three. <laughs> that way I only have three people. Um... Yeah, it says each player nominates a different survivor. Doesn't say that I need to do all four. Well, whatever. I'll do all four just because. Um, okay. Well. Ugh. Let's get four axe people so at least someone can get an axe efficiency. Okay, Luke. Well, see, now I don't want to get... Uh, Lucas can also have Axe now, because I should have chose it last time, I just didn't. Uh, Shaw. Yeah, we'll just go... Luke, Lucas, Shaw. Oh, he's got the Regal Placard. I don't want to do him. Harper, who's got Axe Proficiency. Oh, he's hemophobic as well, so i got to cure that. And then I guess we'll just choose Madison. Madison as well. She'll pick Axe. Because she could have picked it last time, I just didn't because she was a tank, so I didn't pick her. Or should I do like Hayden? Yeah, actually, I'll pick Hayden because it doesn't say I can't pick returning survivors. So, do I want to pick anyone else here? No, definitely don't want to pick Caressa or okay. Four axe wheelers, so at least we get someone with an axe thing. Okay, here we go. Um, man. Uh, let me give them all a different color. So, here we go. Uh, Luke will be blue. Okay, so Luke got a 10. Luke is blue. Lucas is black. He got a 4. So, blue, black... Hayden is pink, five, 
And then Harper is white. A sick. Okay, these actually work. Okay. So, blue. Lucas gets first, which is gain plus one permanent movement. Okay. Lucas gets four movement. Or, uh, he's at six movement. Why did I subtract? Okay. So, Lucas was blue. Or, Luke was blue. What did I say? White was Harper. Second place gains one courage. Uh, Hayden, I said, was purple. So he's third. He gets a new pair of rawhide boots. Whatever, I'm not even going to get them. And Lucas was black, so he came in fourth. He got torn Achilles, severe injury. What's a torn Achilles? Uh, leg, severe injury, legs, torn Achilles. You cannot bear your weight until the end of the showdown whenever you suffer light, heavy, or severe injury. Okay, so nothing. Good. So nothing happens to Lucas. So he was the black dice. Okay, uh, let me just mark everybody's colors if I can. So this is a blue dice, it's a white dice, it's a black dice. Okay, there I've marked everybody's colors. Okay, uh, debate contest. Oh yeah, so the, the, that was score plus movement. Everybody had uh, five movement, so. Oops. Now, this is score plus understanding, so. <sighs> okay. Score plus understanding. So, Lucas has a 10. Does anybody beat a 10? I don't think anybody's going to beat a 10. Maybe. Nope. Okay, so Lucas comes in first He's because he got the 10. Gain bragging rights and one skull basic resource. Okay, skull I think adds insanity. Where's skull? Skull! Okay, so I gained a skull basic resource. And... Uh, could survivor of your choice gains one insanity. Uh, whatever. It can be Luke. That'll put him at two. Okay, that gets rid of the black dice. He was first. Okay. Next highest was a four. So that's actually a five. So th this is not going to be the highest because he's got one under... White dice had one understanding. Or no, the white dice has four understanding. So this is actually an eight. Which, yeah, it's going to for sure be, yep. So it's actually white, blue, pink is the order. Okay, so white now is Harper, who gets second place, who gains one understanding. Okay, the blue dice was Luke, who... Uh, survivor gets too angry and must skip the next hunt. Okay, so he got angry and he must skip the next hunt. So Luke is going to skip the next hunt. And then Hayden uh, is apathetic. So he's pretty much done, I think, right? Apathetic means you're just done. I mean, I mean done, done in terms of uh, being good. Apathetic. You cannot gain, you cannot use or gain survival. And he's nowhere near curing that. So, he's apathetic. Apathetic. Nowhere is near curing that. Okay, now... Um, fight contest. So, no one's gotten fourth in every... Uh, I don't have... There's Hayden did not come in fourth last time. So, there's no way I'm going to have someone who gets fourth in all four things. Okay. Third fight. Uh, we'll just... I can't believe this is actually... I'm ro not rolling doubles for anything. Okay. Uh, what do I add for this one? This one's plus strength. So, let's start with the... Black die. He's got a four strength. That's the highest strength. So, he's also the highest die. So, Lucas gains yourself an axe proficiency. You're axe proficient one. 
That sucks. Didn't go. It didn't go to someone who actually had axe proficiency. The only thing I wanted. Ugh. The blue dice is next. Okay, I'm just getting Lucas out of here. So Lucas can still do stuff. It's, uh, who was it? Hayden, who has to skip the next hunt? Uh, huh. So Hayden's got himself an eight. All right, yeah, so Hayden got fourth again. I'm just going to get rid of him now. Dismembered arm, severe injury. Uh, dismembered arm. Lose an arm. You can no longer activate two-handed weapons. This injury is permanent. Okay, he's got a dismembered arm. He's done. Hayden's done. Good. Dismembered arm. You could just go to the bottom of the pile. Okay. Uh huh. So that was Hayden. He was the pink dice. So now the white dice is a nine, and the blue dice. Okay. So blue is second place. Permanent strength. Luke goes up to five strength. Uh, Luke did really good, actually. Yeah, Luke's now a six movement, five strength. It's good. Luke can still do stuff. Harper was the white dice, who came in third. Uh, third. Came to random fighting art. He does not have three fighting arts, so whatever I draw is what he's getting. Here we go. Man, this is taking forever. This is going to be a long settlement event. Another reason why adding five years to the timeline is kind of ridiculous. Um, and I know I, I did it upon myself too by fighting the Watcher early, but I still would have been in the same position. Okay. Random fighting art, that one. Uh, let's see. What do I draw a whole bunch of? That is, uh, let's see, it's probably, I guess, Timeless Eye. I'm going to guess Timeless Eye because I, that's pointless. Uh, because I already have it on a sculpture. Or the one I draw a lot is like, um, like Acrobatics. I think I've drawn like four or five times. Ha! Oh, my gosh. That's a really good one. That's Harvestman. I've, only, I've drawn that once before, but this is a really good one. Uh, gain three movement. Whenever you are knocked down, you gain minus one movement. Uh, if you have the tiny, no, I don't. Hmm. Harper's now a harvestman, which is, he's really good, but I got to get rid of some of these disorders. So he's got eight movement now. I got to, I got to get rid of some of those disorders. He's got, he, he's got hemophobia and indecision. Okay. Uh, so Harper, Luke, Lucas. I forget who else can. Uh, what? I'll figure it out later. <laughs> okay. When I'm making the graphics. That's it. That's perfect. Um. Yeah. That's. This is great. Triathlon of deaths over. It was a long settlement event, but I can do stuff. Awesome. Um, let's let's go. Let's try to do something. Now, uh, the reason why this is still going to take a long time <laughs> is uh, there's a lot of things that might happen again. I might not be able to do everything I want to do. But let's start right now. We're welcoming in Lantern Year 26. I already said that, I guess. I marked it off already. There is tons, and oh, I got a rawhide boots. So I'll just put this down. I don't want to actually get out another card, but I write it down on here. Okay, we've got all kinds of stuff to do here. So, first thing is first. I don't think I'll have to do cooking if I'm going to fight a Gorm, because it, very unlikely it will run completely away like the antelope. But it'd be nice to still do it. Um... Uh, cooking. It'd be nice to still cook something if I can here. I don't have any nightmare ticks, which would be the evasion, which is what I wanted, but maybe I could just make something else. Um, I don't think I can, though, because I think everything else requires multiple hunts. I don't have any uh, resources from Phoenix or from Lion, so... 
All right, with that said, let's figure this out. First things first, Broken Lantern here. We're gonna just put this right back in the basic resource deck and we're gonna add it to our Broken Lantern tally. Now, we have nine Broken Lanterns. So, we need, I think I counted out, we need seven iron. We have three, so I would need to be able to make four iron. So, let's go to good old scrap smelting and we'll get lightning. I think we're just gonna start right with scrap smelting because um, even if I can't oxidize, I could at least make stuff. <laughs> so, with scrap smelting here, spending one endeavor to scrap smelt, I would love to just roll, we're doing it with lightning, so we get plus one. I would love to roll a nine or a 10. Uh, that's a three, so we can make one iron. S so familiar. All right. Down to six broken lanterns, but we're at four iron. Okay, lightning again. Oh my gosh, a nine. Oh, that's amazing. I can make as much iron as I want. This is absolutely amazing. Yep, you can spend three scrap and add one iron. You may repeat this any number of times. So we can do this as much as we want now. Whew. Okay, so we'll just convert. We'll get the last two iron. That puts us at six iron. I think I needed seven iron. Now, to get the other three scrap, I have two lantern tubes, which lantern tubes are considered scrap, and I don't need these lantern tubes for anything, so I'll spend two more lantern tubes, and then uh, one legendary horn, which is also scrap. So, legendary horn, also scrap. Uh, yeah, so two lantern tubes, one legendary horn. Two lantern tubes. And one legendary horn. Did I, I must have spent the legendary horn last time on something. But I didn't build anything last time. What did I spend the bone on? Or did I forget to write down legendary horn? Uh, I'll have to watch it back now. I'll spend the skull. Uh, okay. No, wait. What am I doing? I need another scrap. I can't just... What did I spend the legendary horn on? I must have just forgot to write it down. I must have forgot to grab the card and write it down. What would I have spent it on? I didn't spend it on anything. I didn't do anything last time. All right. I'm spending the legendary horn. I should have it. I just didn't write it down, I guess. Okay, so that'll be three scrap. That'll give us other iron. That'll make us one, two, three, four, five, six. That's seven iron now we have. Okay, so with seven iron, here we go. Now we're spending a lot of resources we're spending them from this piece of paper first because they're in storage that because I have all those out to write it down so let's get going on making things for spending first thing is first here we've got um, there it is beacon shield oh so I'm spending one endeavor to make as much leather as I want as well so, here we go. Two iron, three leather, four bone. Doing it from the resources. So how much is a beacon shield? Two iron. There we go. Spending two iron. Uh, three leather. So, three leather. We'll spend the three pelt from last time. Three pelt from last time. Yeah, I must have done something with a pelt and a bone. And I must have spent the legendary horn stupidly. 
So if that's the case, if I did spend that legendary horn instead of spending it as scrap, I'll just spend the spiral horn from last for last time as spending it as a bone. Why would I spend a pelt and a scroll? What what was I doing? I must have forgot to write it down. Anyway, so spend the three pelt from last time. And what else do we need? Four. Four bone. Okay, so bone. Uh, the four shank bone. <laughs> Four shank bone from last time as well. Okay, so that will be the beacon shield. So there it is. I'll show it in a second here because right now we're also now going to make another lantern glaive, which is two iron, two leather, and four bone. So two more iron brings us down to three iron. Two more iron, um, two more leather. So we had three Monster High left over last time. We'll spend two of those. Uh-huh. And four bone. Okay, so we'll spend... Spiral Horn from last time. The two large flat teeth from last time. And this... Um... This shank bone, so one shank bone. Uh, two shank bones, so whatever. So there's another bone. Okay, so that's the other lantern glaive, which I have right here. So another lantern glaive. All right. That's all we're going to do here at this for right now. Now, uh, huh. now we're going to oxidize. So that's going to be one endeavor to oxidize from the exhausted lantern horde. Oxidation, one endeavor. Now, uh, okay. Nominate three other survivors and create a coating and protective gear. If there are no other survivors, nominate. You cannot proceed. Okay. Uh, the dangerous procedure requires protective outfits, a long placement tool, and a catalyst coating. Pay the cost below to repair your implements, then craft one piece of gear in the high voltage bath. After you craft the gear, the implements are destroyed. So, uh, implement cost. So we're going to have to spend these implement costs twice, because we're going to do two pieces of gear. So let me make sure I have enough. So the implement cost twice would be um, two black lichen, which we have, because we had one and one from last time. Two cocoon membrane, which we have. Six organ, which we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, first here. So in storage, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six in storage. So it's exactly the same thing as, as up there, actually. So in storage, it's one bladder. It's the same thing. One gum, one brain, two beef steak, and one regular organ. So it's exactly the same things that are right there. One, two, three, four, five. So we have enough. We have six organ, six bones. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven bones here. So we've got that. And then three leather. Uh, we have one monster hide in storage. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And we've got, we've got six out here. So, we have enough to do this twice. Yeah, the dangerous procurements doesn't say... You can only do oxidation once per lantern year, so. Yeah, doesn't say you can only do it once. Yeah, danger procurement. Um. Yeah, after you craft the gear, the implements are destroyed, so I'll just make two sets of impl implementations. Okay, so spending everything I said. So here we go. Two cocoon membrane. Spending it because we got those. I don't think we. I don't remember when exactly we got those. So two cocoon membrane spent. Uh, two black lichen. We're spending the one that was in storage and the one that we just got here from this hunt. Two black lichen. Uh, six organ. So here we go. One bladder. One gum. 
uh, one brain, two beef steaks, and the one monster organ, all the six that we had in storage. Three bones. We've already used up all the bones in storage. So, one, two, or one, two, three, so there's five antelope bones here. So shank bone, shank bone, spiral horn, flat tooth, flat tooth. So that's five, and then we'll spend the skull is six. So that's six bones. Uh, three leather. So do we have any more hide? We have, uh, well, that's just a regular monster hide. Uh, so it costs six. Okay, so I think I'll just spend the... Now I have crab spiders, but whatever. So uh, two basic hide here. And four pelt from the antelope. Boop. That's six. Okay, now to oxidize the shield is another hide. Oh, it's four bone to oxidize the stupid glaive. Wow, that's a lot. Four bone to oxidize the glaive. I guess I don't have enough to oxidize both. I thought I did. What am I off? One, two... I'm off by two bone. Uh, what is this black lichen? Uh, lantern tubes. Oh, no, I can't get any bone, really? Yeah, cocoon membranes and lantern tubes are, are organs. Ooh, I can't get any bone. I need two bone. Uh, so I guess I'm only going to oxidize just the beacon shield, I guess. So to oxidize the beacon shield, it's two iron. So I'll be left with one iron. And uh, we'll just get back everything else from implementation costs. So we get back three leather. So what I spend here, the pelts, I'll just get those pelts back. Three... Bones. We'll get back to three shank bone, uh, three shank bones, three pelts, and the organs that I erased off of here. So we'll just get back the two beef steak and the brain, mint brain, whatever, screen brain. Oh, and then one black lichen. We'll get one black lichen back and one cocoon membrane back. Huh. Oh, the cyclops fly. Is that bone? Nope, it's not. Hmm. Oh well. So I, all I can do is oxidize the beacon shield, which is still something. Uh, so I just spend one hide to oxidize the beacon shield. Um, I think I already did. I can't remember now if I spent the one hide to oxidize the beacon shield. Wow, it costs four bone to do another glaive. It's weird. It's a lot. It's not weird. I mean, it's a lot. Nothing else. Oh, I guess the dagger costs four hide. Never mind. It's only the beacon shield, actually. The beacon shield is unbelievably cheap. <laughs> the beacon shield only costs one. Everything else costs four of something. Okay. Uh, so that leaves us with one iron. And a lot of stuff still out here. But, I mean, I guess I'll just leave it in storage because I'm going to need it fighting a Gorm or a God or whatever I'm going to end up fighting a Gorm. I'll fight the Gorm next time for sure. Okay, uh, we have Endeavors here. I was not expecting to have Endeavors left. What should I do? I guess I should just go after more... I need more iron, so I guess I'll just go after more I guess I could trigger Intimacy. Is one of these people a matchmaker on the way? Uh, who was returning? I don't think any of them are matchmakers. I think they're all tinkerers. Tinkerer, 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 tinkerer. Yeah, they were all tinkerers except for one of them. Okay, so I'd have to do Augury. 
I don't know what's you know what what's cure disorders. Uh, that's a really good thing to do right now. Cure disorders. Uh, oh yeah, let me get the oxidized beacon shield. Okay, got it. Uh, I'll show both and then compare them because I never uh, we never made a beacon shield. <laughs> I just oxidized it right away. So here's a regular beacon shield. So the reason why beacon shield's great is because we're going to be replacing our um, round leather shield here. So here's the round leather shield. Round leather shields plus one to all hit locations. Uh, round leather shields plus one to all hit locations, and then block one. More importantly, it's got a green upper uh, thing, which is great because that links with the glaives. So yeah, see, so the lantern glaive has a affinity at the bottom. So great. Now, so here's the regular beacon shield, which is what we're replacing. So, regular beacon shield is add two to all hit locations. In our case, it's going to be add three because we everybody's we have shield mastery, so everybody gets shield proficiency or specialization. I mean, uh, you can block two, so you spend an action to ignore two hits the next time you are attacked. So that's awesome. Now let's look at the oxidized version of this. So now we've oxidized it, so it's the same thing. It's going to be add two to all. But this one's got deflect too. So deflect is you spend your action. Uh, you may have exactly two deflect tokens. Or you now have exactly two deflect tokens. The next two times you are a hit, ignore a hit and lose one deflect token. So it's better than block two. Because when you block two, you just you block two hits. You can't share it. So, like, if there was only one hit going through, your block two would block two of them, and then that'd be it. With the deflect tokens, you could block one on one attack, and then you could block another one on a second attack afterwards. Like, uh, you know, for, like, the Butcher when it draws two cards or something like that. Or after every round of performs basic action, the Kingsman does that. He attacks, and then he performs basic action. Or I think it's actually basic action, then attack. I forget exactly what it is. But that's why the deflect token is so much better. So... Uh, you also keep the deflect token, so since you can't spend survival or anything on your turn, almost positive, I, I'll confirm this, but you could spend the deflect token on like a, like a reaction that did basic attack. So, okay, now, so we still have four endeavors. Hmm. Man, I really wish I could have oxidized a second lantern blade. Uh-huh. So, four endeavors. I was not expecting this. <laughs> I was expecting to hit the scrap smelt like four or five times. So, let's cure disorders. Okay, curing this disorder here. Uh, so we need a three or a six. Three through six. Whose disorders, who did I just say? The Harvestman dude would be awesome to cure his disorder, yeah. He's got indecision and hemophobia. I forget exactly what indecision did. I didn't write it down. So when I don't write it down, it usually means uh, it's not that bad. Oh yeah, so here's indecision. Uh, if you are the event revealer of hunt events that call you to make a roll, roll twice and use the lower result. Oh yeah. So this, when I don't write it down, it's something I look at before I start. I grab all the cards. I put the card uh, up here on my little, see I got my tableau here. So when I'm playing, I have the cards out. Uh, with things like hemophobia, I write it down on their sheet because it's more important I don't forget stuff like that. Um, so with this indecision, we don't need to cure. I mean, we'll hemophobia will definitely cure. We just roll right now. So we're spending one of these... This is with Harper to cure hemophobia. A five. Uh, yeah, cure one disorder. So we've cured hemophobia. Uh, huh. And we'll spend another one just because I have his card out. Let's go again. That's again a five. Awesome. So we'll also cure indecision. Now I've gotten rid of it. Uh, huh. We've got two left. Someone had flower disorder, I think. So I'm just looking at people with axe. <laughs> axes, axes, axes. Uh, oh, ghostly beauty. That's the thing here with Madison. Uh, 
Uh huh. Oh, Dustin would be good. Yeah, Dustin was awesome. The thing with Dustin is he's got flower addiction. So let's cure Dustin of his flower addiction, if I can. Uh, seven. Cure a new cranial hemorrhage. That's not helpful. We'll spend one more. Cure flower addiction. I did. <laughs> yes. Flower addiction is now gone off Dustin. Which is great. Now, uh, I'm definitely not going to use Lantern Glaive. Because Lantern Glaives are early iron. So they get broken... Well, it's not they get broken. They they don't hit on indestructible locations, and the Gorm has some. So, uh, Dustin was really good. That's great. That's everything. Perfect. That's awesome. That went that went really really well. Like really well. Um, way better than last time. So we've got all this stuff here. Uh, we've pretty much got enough here to just oxidize that glaive right off the bat next time. Just by even defeating the Gorm at all, I'll probably get two more bone. So, um, I shouldn't say that. I, there's a chance I might not, which would be terrible. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll fight the Gorm. Uh, the Gorm's not bad. I'll try for the Riot Mace. I'm willing to fight the Gorm. Riot Mace is not easy to come by, but it would be awesome to get. So I didn't even have to. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to use wind. I thought I had wind out here already to use her. Huh. Awesome. Wow. That went really, really well. I'm very pleased with how that went. So, uh, yeah, we'll fight a level three Gorm. There's nothing really else I need now, uh, besides to oxidize that second glaive. But for as far as the Gold Smoke Knight's concerned, my plan is to. Uh, to use two glaives and one bow user with the the, the critting. Somehow Caressa might have to die. <laughs> uh, and we'll transfer her uh, stats to someone. I don't know if I'll use both Lantern Glaives on the Gold Smoke Knight. Um, I don't know. Uh, the other option would be using... Uh, a devastating weapon, but the calcified Zimbato. Well, maybe if I if I'm gonna use the devastating weapon, I'll I'll probably want to transfer Caressa's stats to somebody and then use the devastating weapon on the Gold Smoke Knight. It'd be nice to use the devastating weapon on the Gold Smoke Knight, but I think Timeless Eye, oxidized glaives, uh, is the better way to go, and then just use deflect tokens. I'll make a second be beacon shield and then just have a whole bunch of deflect tokens, and bring out um. What should we call it? Uh, ways to get back. I, think, what is, I forget what it is. Brain mint? Something. I forget what, which one it is. Something lets you get back uh, survival. So that's my plan for the Gold Smoke Knight. I'm pretty much there. Uh, like I said, if there was some... I wouldn't do it now because I didn't get a second oxidized lantern glaive. But if there was some way to challenge the Smoke Knight earlier, I probably would have. But I can't. It doesn't exist. So, <laughs> so we still have four more years left. So we'll do Gorm, and then you guys can tell me your opinions on the um, breaking the rules a little bit to let me fight a Lion God at level one because I, I just don't want to fight a level three. It's not that I it's not that I think I'll lose uh, fighting a level three. I know I'll lose fighting a level three, and I may lose even fighting a level one. Uh, the level three, I just don't like the fact that it has an AI card that instantly kills three people. When it's level three, I, I, that card's still gonna be in the deck even if I fight a level one. So he'll instantly kill one person all the time whenever he draws it. But it's so much better than instantly killing three. <laughs> so um, yep. Other than that, like I said, that's breaking the rules. Fighting a lion guard level one is is uh, fighting a lion god level one is breaking the rules. So um, this went great. This was awesome. Best settlement I think I've had. <laughs> so again, thank you so much for watching. So very humbling, and I'll see you in the next Lantern Year.